Today we'll be talking about Ocean County's Youth Center and its RAISE program. Welcome to Ocean County Focus. I'm Donna Flynn, your host. Joining me today is Ocean County Commissioner Jack Kelly. He serves as Director of Law and Public Safety for Ocean County, and also John Carmen. He's Superintendent of Juvenile Services for Ocean County. Today, we're talking about programs that service the youth of Ocean County. Commissioner, I wanted to talk to you first. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. You have worked with the particular, we're actually, the setting that we're in today is the actually the Ocean County Youth Center, which um, opened its doors back in 2019 on Sunset Avenue and Tom's River. And I want you to talk a little bit about the importance of the programs that are held here. Uh, the, the programs that are held here are important for the youngsters in the community that need supervision. Mm -hmm. and they're not going through any court system, the ones that we have here today. Um, it is open to the public, but if somebody that after school don't have anyone at home or right. whatever it might be, mm -hmm. and we have every kind of program here that you can have to assist these at-risk children. Um, we have uh, educational programs. We use our VOTEC uh, for that mm -hmm. along with our own staff, mm -hmm. our own teachers. Uh, VOTEC, some of the kids are a little rough for VOTEC, if you right, will. Right. But we're used to handling that from mm -hmm. the detention center, so if we get a fire center or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. we can still provide the teachers for that kid. And what we're trying to do is set them up for success in the future mm -hmm. so that this kind of a facility is not where they spend the rest of their life. Sure, but sure. But in fact, they become productive members of our society. Mm -hmm. And these kids want to because, remember, they are here voluntarily. Right. Nobody is forcing them to come. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a situation uh, where the judge says, go there, we're going to put you in detention. Right. These are kids that we've reached out to mm -hmm. that are coming. We work with many, so we work with the Boy Scouts of America. Mm -hmm. We work with um, just a number of uh, some of the other people we work with. We work with uh, Hope Sheds Light. We work with Ocean Mental Health. We work with CMO. All service community providers, we work with them, and a referral service. We are we are a true one-stop shop. So, so this is really a great partnership with a lot of community with members, too. With a lot of See, how did it start? It, yes. All these community members that you're talking mm -hmm. would sit in my office and tell me what kind of program we need. Right, and right. I would reel them in and say, okay, then be part of that. Right. So we have the facility. Right. We have the uh, director here that will oversee the uh, programming, and we make it available, but we make it available to those community outreach that want to reach these kids. Sure. This, there's some history here, and we I, talked yeah, about I just, it before exactly. the show. And I wanted to hit this on that again, This facility that we're in mm -hmm. was originally built as the GINS building. Right. That's an acronym for Juveniles in Need of Supervision. Mm -hmm. These were kids that were in some, had some kind of problem at home. Right. Not necessarily of their own making. Right. But maybe a, um, a, a woman that got remarried and the husband wasn't getting along with the kid and the sure. kid was at risk. Right. So right. the state put together a program called GINS. Mm -hmm. The problem is over the years the state didn't want to use that program anymore and we were down to one or two kids. Right. So we still do that program mm -hmm. but we have so few kids that I don't have the wherewithal to stay staff three shifts a day, seven days a week sure. when maybe there's only one kid in the right. facility. So those kids are now in another facility where we contract with. Okay. This facility was now doing the RAISE program, and John right. will talk a little more mm -hmm. about the RAISE program in just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. But there was still a good part of the building that wasn't being utilized right. to its full uh, need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when John was in my office, we were talking about the kids in need of supervision, talked about how to reach them, and this is the program that we came up. Now, in concept, I was a big part of it. In detail of exactly what programs they run mm -hmm. and how they run them mm -hmm. and who's the instructors and how often, it's, that's up to John and his staff. Right. And they do a remarkable job. I'm so proud of all of them. Thank you. So um, the, the idea came in my office with John, mm -hmm. but it's now, being Barry Steinman, so you can't see him on camera, he's sitting right over here. 
he uh, heads our mentoring program. Right, right. This program is a good partner mm -hmm. with the mentoring program. Sure. That's just one example right. that we do with our own staff. Mm -hmm. And now we're doing even more with the mentoring program, which really meant something during COVID. Sure, Because sure. a lot of the people that were coming to our mentoring program mm -hmm. didn't want to do that anymore. Right. These are volunteers. Sure. They were concerned that they might get COVID, so that program really reduced. Right. We're now here, mm -hmm. and the program is increasing right. again. So right. there's a whole host of different programs that we do. Mm -hmm. This facility is simply the bus. Right, right. <laughs> and, and where right. the kids it's... get on, the programming is done by people, mm -hmm. done by our own staff, mm -hmm. done by volunteers, and, and just so many people that care. Absolutely. About the Absolutely. youth. And I, I, like I said, I already said I'm proud of our staff. I'm also proud of so many volunteers right. that have stepped up yes. to the call mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. are doing the job of making sure that our kids are taken care of and will be successful in the future. Sure. It's so important to me that we have a good education program. Right, right. Um, and we have one here mm -hmm. at the detention center next door. I built a whole school right inside right. of the detention center. Right. We used to do that in a couple of trailers right, outside, outside mm -hmm. and it just wasn't a good environment. Right. And we have a great environment now mm -hmm. and we're doing better than ever in reaching these kids. Mm -hmm. So as I say, I'm proud of all the people that work with it. I'm proud of my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners for funding this. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to them, talked about the program, they understood it and they are funding this. And it's something that's in everybody's best interest, sure. I believe. Sure. John, I'm gonna, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the details. Um, in particular, I want to stay on one topic that the commissioner brought up, the educational component of this program. Tell me about the educational resources that are here and what can a youngster tap into? We are a true one-stop shop for education. From start to finish, mm -hmm. a juvenile, a youth, can get their high school diploma. Oh, that's wonderful You know, so long or GED, it is your high right. school diploma. Okay. But we'll, we'll say, so they're one and the same, but you can come in here, and we have the full testing approved by the state mm -hmm. to give them, to award them their high school equivalently, their diploma. Mm -hmm. That's huge these days. And sure every is. time I talk to a kid, and then the commissioner is actually, the kids, they're referred here, or they're walking off the street. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and say, listen, you know, COVID especially has hit families hard. And school is tough. It isn't. Zoom is not for everybody. No, I know. And so we've had a lot of kids fall through the cracks. Schools are doing their best, mm -hmm. and we, we collaborate with them as well. Sure. If they need somebody, send them over. We'll help them out. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they're having a tough getting a roll back in school, so they'll get involved with the uh, the raise program next door or the youth center here. We have tutors that come in from Votech, mm -hmm. so they'll come in, and we have our schedule set up. They just have to call. We'll get in math or English whatever they may need. Mm -hmm. We have the computers here, and we'll start them the GED prep, see where they are. Mm -hmm. The GED testing will be done, and keep in mind, as the commissioner is very fiscally responsible, I want to say this, it's we're giving taxpayer dollars back to the taxpayer. Sure, That's sure. what this is. Yep. And then they can, once they're done, we just graduated, I believe, three Three youth. Oh, that's so exciting. It's, it that's it such gives me chills. It it's, really I, I am Absolutely. excited. So we yes. just graduated them. Yes. It's and the don't best forget, in the world. once they graduate and get that high school diploma, now they're eligible to go on to college. Exactly. And, exactly. And that's what the a hope door to open here up is, for them. That's right. Yep. We're opening doors so yep. that they can go on and be even more successful. Not every one of them will go to college. Sure. We also have sure. Votech in here, or a lot of Votech. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Somebody wants to be an auto mechanic. Yep. The uh, trades a are baker, so key. Whatever it might be, there's all different programs available there mm -hmm. so we get them ready for the education that they um, require right. to be successful in the future so the high school diploma is only part of it it's mm -hmm. what doors that open absolutely so that they can get full education yep. um, so that they can be successful mm -hmm. members of society and we and work with Ocean County Voltage. we're also going to take a quick break I apologize okay. for that but we are going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back here on Ocean County Focus Ocean County Board of Commissioners 
working to make Ocean County a better place to call home, and a special place to visit. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners, working to make Ocean County a better place to call home and a special place to visit. Welcome back to Ocean County Focus. Joining me today is Commissioner Jack Kelly, who's Director of Law and Public Safety and our Superintendent of Juvenile Services, John Carmen. And we are coming to you from the Ocean County Youth Center today. And we're talking about programs and services that are being helpful and beneficial to the children of Ocean County. Commissioner, when we went to break, we were talking again about the educational component of this. Tell me how you feel about having three students come through here and getting their GEDs or their high school diplomas. Well, just to be clear, three is only the most recent mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, we have many, many people that have come through. Mm -hmm. I always feel fantastic when more people get that piece of paper. It's so important for everything else that you want to accomplish in right. life. So it makes me feel very good, but it makes me feel very good for the student. Sure, that, sure. That's, that's what that's all about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our mentoring program, is another program very similar, and we're going to be talking in just a few minutes with Barry Steinitz, yes, we are. who runs the uh, mentoring program, mm -hmm. and really was the impetus to starting this entire mm -hmm. program, right. how we can make the mentoring program even better. Right. But the reason I say that is education again. Mm -hmm. Part of the uh, responsibility to mentor is to make sure these kids understand mm -hmm the importance of education. So we take them to ball games and we do the, all the stuff, fishing, sure. whatever it sure. is that you're going to do mm -hmm. uh, with them to have fun. Mm -hmm. But during that, we make sure that we discuss with them the importance of education to the rest of their career. So how do I feel? I always feel great, but I feel great for that student that got that piece of paper. Absolutely. And John, um, as we were talking about the, first of all, I know that there are, are there schedules available that people can look at or how can people find out or how can kids or children find out or their parents find out? How, how do they access the services it's here? Just, I think that's can, so important. We're, we're Ocean County Youth Center and the Race Program on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Twitter, and you could just Google Ocean County Youth Center uh, or uh, call a number which we'll provide later. Mm -hmm. But the schedule here, we we have our teachers here, scheduled classes, one of the biggest uh, components of the, the GED or high school diploma is mathematics, it's tough in English. So we have math, uh, Tuesday math is from 1 p.m. to 2.30 and English is from 2.30 to 3.30 and on Friday as well English from 2.30 to 3.30. Everything is flexible and as the commissioner and Ms. Flynn were talking about, Barry brought in one of our teachers, certified teachers, Vincent, is a tutor here. So it's, he gets to see, you know, there's his work. It's great, it's, you know, collaboration. He's a teacher that's brought this kid through, and here, here's your diploma. Right, hey, right. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. So if you have a kid, and, and you stress this too, we're 155 Sunset Avenue. Uh, we're not the juvenile detention center. Kids right. can come and go as they please. It is a locked door. Right. However, they can walk out at any time. Right. You are not, you are, any kid from Ocean County is welcome. Right. Okay, you just call, schedule, make an appointment, mm -hmm. and you meet with our staff. What do you need? And we'll help you out and we'll get you started. Right. And so we are not juvenile attention. We are Ocean County Youth Center right. and RACE program. And this has nothing to do with incarceration. Correct. It's got nothing, nothing to, to do, do with, with the courts. It's just a straight forward, hey, you need, you, you need, you're having a bad day or you're having Correct. a good day. You're, you're, you're welcome here. As the commissioner touched on, the genesis was to how can we give back to the community, how can we help. Right. Um, we can do from, you know, substance use, GED, uh, high school diploma, uh, or just recreation. You sure. want a safe place for your kid. The mm -hmm. kid wants a safe place to relax, get out, or a computer lab, Wi-Fi. Uh, we have music lessons, and we have a plethora of things. Like a one-stop shop. We're here, and if we can't do it, we have so many resources in Ocean County sure. that we will connect you with mm -hmm. who you need. If mm -hmm. we can't help you, we'll find someone who can. Right, and we're actually going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have Barry Steinmans joining us and talking about the mentoring program here at the Ocean County Youth Center. Thank you, and we'll be right back. The 
the Ocean County Board of Commissioners, working to make Ocean County a better place to call home and a special place to visit. Welcome back to Ocean County Focus. Joining us now is Barry Steinmetz. He's the coordinator of the Ocean County Monitoring Program. And of course, Commissioner Kelly is still here with us. And we are coming to you today from the Ocean County Youth Center. Commissioner Kelly, I'm gonna to go to you first again. What is the importance of having a mentoring program in Ocean County? Well, just to be clear again, mentoring program has been in place for many, many years. Mm -hmm. In fact, John Carmen, who just left us, was a mentor when he first came he into really? the program. The reason originally that we hired John mm -hmm. was because he's a retired professional football player mm -hmm. playing for the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. We thought that would be good to introduce to the kids in the detention center sure. for someone them to look up to. Sure. And you saw how big he is, they sure. really look up to Yes, uh, <laughs> we but, all do. <laughs> uh, and you know, from then we had Art Midgley from Little Lake Harbor right. Right. who ran the mentoring program. He subsequently retired. Mm -hmm. Barry was introduced to me by a good friend of both of ours named Jack Savetta, okay. and Jack went to his church mm -hmm. down in Little Egg Harbor mm -hmm. and talked about how good he was with kids. Mm -hmm. I brought him into my office. I brought John into the office. We interviewed and said, yes, we need that. So the mentoring program, and we talked about it so much already, mm -hmm. reaches so many kids right. that it's a very important component not only of this program, but right. a very big component in the detention center, mm -hmm. which is located right next door. Sure. But those kids are in there. Mm -hmm. They had some problems w through the court system, right. and they can't leave at nighttime right. and go home. Right. Uh, so, right. you know, we want to reach the, their young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever they did wrong, they did. Mm -hmm. But they're young kids, and they deserve a bright future. Sure. So that's the importance of the mentoring sure. program. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of time, so let's right. go to Barry. Barry um, tell mm -hmm. me about how does the program work? Where, is it in schools? Um, you know, what are the age of the children? What, what actually happens during a mentoring session? Well, the mentoring program is basically held in elementary schools mm -hmm. that are participating in Ocean County. Mm -hmm. uh, the age is approximately around eight, nine year old in that area okay. and then they can up to their graduation could be about a 11 12 year old child mm -hmm. and the great thing about the mentoring program is uh, i re, uh, go out and i recruit uh, mostly senior citizens in our county mm -hmm. and i train them myself and then i get them into a elementary school that's participating the school provides us with a child that may need some extra adult help you know, sometimes a child goes home to an empty home mm -hmm. and there's no adult because both both our mother and father are working sure. or that. And the child feels kind of like abandoned. And so this adult takes their time during the week to come there at the child's lunch break mm -hmm. to sit down. They could eat their lunch with the child or to just talk and then maybe play some games. And by doing this over a period of time, I'm hoping a friendship a rapport will happen mm -hmm. and then the the adult will be able to offer the child some good advice sure. sort of like what we were talking commissioner about education mm -hmm. education is so important mm -hmm. these days in order to have a good future mm -hmm. so we always encourage these children to stay in school get the best grades they can mm -hmm. also to uh, obey the, the teachers and mm -hmm. get along with the other students. Mm -hmm. So the mentoring program has had a great um, impact in our community with the children and also with our senior citizens, sure. giving sure. them something to do with all that time on their hands and all that experience. Now they can share it with a child. It's intergenerational. Mm -hmm. It really, be, it's become a tremendous benefit for our county. Right. And, up to the pandemic, I had 180 uh, mentors oh, wow. in the program. That's yes. amazing. In 13 That's schools. I, I would love to see more schools participate right, in this right. uh, because it is a great program. Well, maybe if schools Talk see this, hopefully they'll of, see it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It. Talk about some of the demographics that come in as mentors. In other words, I know we have some from the prosecutors, some from, talk uh, about who, uh, not names, but yes, who but are the mentors? We, we can have from a, uh, a housewife 
to somebody highly educated mm -hmm. that is a retired school. A lot of we get a lot of retired school teachers mm -hmm. because they just miss being with children again. Right. So they like to get involved in the program. We have men who have all been in the military, have had uh, adventurous jobs mm -hmm. and that, and they're or they're into uh, hobbies. And you and, and a lot of our, our little boys. They really love to have an older gentleman to talk with them about sports. Sure. It's so important. And, and for the girls, we have a, I have some mentors that love crafts, arts and crafts. They bring that in and share it with the child. And then the child, once they're done, they take it home. And it's something to hold on to, to be mm -hmm. precious memories. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole program, and it has been around for a long time, it has done such good things in our community, and I am just so honored to be involved in it and to be leading it. it, it I, I don't take it for granted. I, it has become really a part of my life. Oh, that's wonderful. That's, that is wonderful. Yes. We're actually going to take another fast break, okay. but we are going to provide information to folks okay. in the next episode or the next part of this or, or at the end of the show to let them know how they might be able to tap into this program, right. um, whether it be for students or for potential mentors. So okay. thank you so much for joining oh, us, it's, Barry. It's my pleasure. Thank you both. Thank you. Right. And we're going to be right back here on Ocean County Focus. And John Carmen's going to be joining us again. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners encourages residents to recycle right, with information from their all-new educational guides. This information provides guidelines for everyday recycling, as well as how to dispose of bulky and potentially dangerous hazardous waste. This information is available at every municipality's town hall, library, recycling center, and at the county connection inside the Ocean County Mall. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners, working to make Ocean County a better place to live, and a special place to visit. Welcome back to Ocean County Focus. John Carmen has returned um, to, to join us for the last segment of the show. And John, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about another program that's kind of situated in the youth center, but it's separate, mm -hmm. and it's called the RAISE program. Tell me what the RAISE program does. Uh, to tie off with what the commissioner was speaking about with Jen's, and then we transitioned into the RAISE program 20 years ago, reasonable alternative to incarceration through self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So it's wordy, but it's true to the word. Uh, so what we do is they'll take any kid, any kid that's been turned away, and again, these two programs mesh together. They, these, our staff works together, and if we can't help you here, we'll help you there. But they have automotive over their training, Votech training. They take them over Votech, mm -hmm. work, work with the scouts, Girl mm -hmm. Scouts or Boy Scouts. Uh, we'll, we'll work with anybody in there, and we have a culinary program. Mm -hmm. We also have a wood shop. We have one of the best kids make fishing lures, and they'll take them out fishing. How appropriate Basic for the Jersey set. Shore. But, the, the, you know, you, when you talk about uh, the the auto skills, the auto shop, getting, uh, you know, what is my job trade? So you have your, your high school diploma now. Let's help them out, and, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. The low tech does tremendous job, but we're another station. Sure. A satellite that can help you also. This is your career path. Right. And I'm into, I'm into cars here. I mean, let, let me find out how to do this. Sure. So we have the facilities over here and the capability to help these kids build the program. And everything else as well. They have the full GED program mm -hmm. through Pierce Youth, start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, three, the three staff there, uh, amazing. And from start to finish, we can help you. You come in tutoring over there as well. So any kid, come on in, make an appointment, and we'll get you set up and get you going. What's the age for raise? What, what, what? Well, it's 12 to 18. Okay. Now, say if you're 19 or 20, uh, generally I'll talk to the commissioner and I, I get permission. But if there's an older uh, person out there that needs some help, and we had a... Uh, Respectfully, we had someone with uh, autism on, this, on the spectrum and needed a little, little help and 21, so we helped them out. And we got it done. Mm -hmm. So there are certain cases, call them, call right. us, okay. and we'll help. Right, right. We'll help. Now, who, are, are you sent folks for the RAISE program? Because again, there is a, a difference between the youth center and the RAISE. Correct. So how do you, how do you come to become part of the RAISE program? The RAISE program? program can be referred to by probation, juvenile okay. probation and the courts. Mm -hmm. Or you can just walk in. So it's referral or walk in, mm -hmm. either way. Right. And again, the kids are not locked in here. It's not, you're not trapped, but you can walk right out any time, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's, it's a safe environment. Right. Everything is safe. Staff is very well vetted. 
invested and vested in the programming. Mm -hmm. So just come on in, check us out. We talk a lot about the GED program, the educational components, and that really reaches the younger, the oh, I'm sorry, the older youths, mm. if you will, the old, the teen, you know, teens who are 17 or so. What about what does what does what is the focus though of these programs for the younger children that are here so the younger kids can come in here and we've had them in here we have from xbox to music group to basic computer lab learn how to do that and we started this at risk if you're say a parent concerned about your youngster with the new uh, marijuana laws. Mm -hmm. We have a substance use program. Mm -hmm. It's um, we have NAA. We have everything you would have in this room right behind me. So they can come in here and do that. Or if a kid just needs a safe place to sit down and hang out mm -hmm. and watch television, they can do that too. Mm -hmm. So we offer that in culinary classes. You want to learn how to cook? We'll cook for you, and we feed you here. We and you know I. <laughs> I like food, so uh, we, we will feed you here, and uh, they make in this good advertisement. <laughs> right? uh, we have some of the best volunteers, and I, I need to say Miss Bunny is an amazing volunteer, comes in her own time. We have a greenhouse, we have a garden out there. Our greenhouse, you, we have a, a koi pond, you learn about basic agriculture, how do, how do I grow things, career fields. So the youngsters, they come and help out, or across the board, mm -hmm. and again, if we can't do it here, we'll find someone who can. And that's a wonderful philosophy too, right, Commissioner? Absolutely. I mean, you know, isn't isn't that the whole the whole idea is, is if you can't find it here, other people can help too. I mean, you've really put together a great program at, out at this at this complex here. Absolutely. I only hired somebody to put together a great <laughs> program. They have worked I don't want to take anything from them. They're, the sure. staff and oh, the volunteers absolutely. are the ones that have worked mm -hmm. hard to put mm -hmm. together a great program. Mm -hmm. I just want to correct one thing just a little bit. Sure. The RAISE program is not separate from the youth center. Okay. The youth center is the facility. Right, right. right. We okay. run a, a varied program, right. including okay. uh, the RAISE right. program. Right. But it's not separate from right. the youth center. It right. is in the youth center, mm -hmm. and it is now we have adopted them into our program at the youth center. Right, So right. The, the youth center, I, I only say that so that the public understands the youth center is simply the facility. Right, okay. The programs, whether it's mentoring or education or drug or playing the games, it, all of that is happens at the youth center. Right, right. So, And that's what we use this for because this facility built a long time ago mm -hmm. by freeholders before I was on the board, and I've been on the board 30 years, mm -hmm. and this was built before I was on the board. Mm -hmm. And then because things change in the court system, mm -hmm. who goes to what kind of program, all of a sudden we were down to having just three or four kids using this large right. facility. Right. We said, we're going to make better use of the facility than mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, RAISE program is now part of the youth center. Right, right. And actually, we have a minute left. So, Commissioner, I'm going to send it over to you. Um, the significance of this youth center, what what would you like to see come from this? What What is the ultimate goal of the youth center? To keep growing. Because I'll tell you, going back, I just said, here almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. I didn't envision a lot of the programs we're doing today. Sure, sure. So what I want to do is hire people that keep coming to me and talking about new programs. The scout just came into my office a couple of weeks ago. I put them right That's in contact great. with John mm -hmm. and said they want to be part of the program. Let's mm -hmm. incorporate them. Sure. So this program, my vision is that it continues to grow and serve our youth because that serves our community. And actually, I want to thank the both of you for joining me today here on Ocean County Focus. Thank you. Um, you know, we are where we will provide information on who to call and where this is located, and your websites and stuff, so more people will will gain knowledge of it. And it's a great program. And I want to thank you guys for joining us today too. Thank you. Very Thanks much. very much. Have a good day.